we have the potential to encounter very complex functions. Functions that will require multiple different combinations of the properties we've established so far in order to differentiate them. So in example 12, for instance, we could start off by recognizing that what we have here is the product of two functions, 6x times e to the 5x. So we could start off by applying the product rule, taking the derivative of the first function times the second function, plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. So taking the derivative of the first function is very straightforward. That just becomes 6 e to the 5x plus 6x. But now to take the derivative of e to the 5x, we have to apply the chain rule. So this will become e to the 5x times the derivative of that interior function, 5x. This will give us 6e to the 5x plus 6x e to the 5x times 5 or 6e to the 5x plus 30x e to the 5x. <clears throat> so we started off with the product rule, but within the product rule had a function that to differentiate we needed to apply the chain rule. And then our last step here will just be to factor out anything common between the two terms. So we get 6e to the 5x times 1 plus 5x. So as functions get more complicated, we'll need to apply those multiple properties. And we'll see the same thing again in example 13. Here we have x cubed times 3 minus x, that quantity cubed. So again, we'll start off by first applying the product rule, taking the derivative of the first function times the second function. and then the first function times the derivative of the second function. So our first derivative is a simple one. This becomes 3x squared times 3 minus x cubed plus x cubed. And now, again, we have to apply the chain rule to take the derivative of the second function. So this will become 3 times that inner function, 3 minus x squared. So starting off by applying the power rule, and then multiply by the derivative of that interior function. So the derivative of 3 minus x will be negative 1. So actually, we could rewrite this as negative 3x cubed. So since this derivative becomes negative 1, we get negative 1 times 3x cubed. So we get negative 3x cubed times 3 minus x squared. And what we've got in common now is a 3x squared in both and a 3 minus x squared in both terms. So we can factor out 3x squared times 3 minus x, that quantity squared, which will leave us with, in the first term, a 3 minus x, and then minus an x in the second term, or 3x squared times 3 minus x, that quantity squared, times 3 minus 2x. So obviously when we start chaining some of these properties together, these will become some of our longer derivative properties. 
but in certain cases we'll have more complex functions that would require these more complex derivatives.